Which you guys got another video here for you on group policy settings you should know. I'm going to go through some of the most important group policy settings to help you block out certain things. If you want to set up your PC, say, for instance, uh, someone else that you don't want them to gain access to certain features, you can set up these inside group policy. And that's what we're going to be going through in this video. As you can see here, command prompt, registry, control panel, access to your C. C drive and access to OneDrive, installing applications, the list goes on. You can block all these inside group policy, can be quite useful to learn. And I'll show you some of the most useful ones that you can use, but there's tons of other ones. So if you like this sort of content, let me know. So open up the search box and type group policy editor or edit group policy, and it will allow you to open up the group policy editor. As long as you're running Windows 10 Pro or Windows 11 Pro or above, you'll have access to the group policy editor like this. So let's go ahead and go through here. It's broken down into two sections here, compute configuration and user configuration. So whether you want to block it at the user level or the computer level, you have two options available here. So you'll see me going backwards and forwards for computer level and user level. Let's go ahead and start off with the very first one, which is the control panel. So we're going to go and do this at the user configuration level. So let's go there and go to administrative templates and once we're there, we can now click on control panel. Inside here, you'll see control panel listed right here. Inside here, you're going to get some settings which you can mess around with. We're going to be interested in a prohibit access to the control panel and PC settings. But you've got ones here like hide uh, specific type of uh, control panel uh, items. And you've also got other ones in here which you can mess around with. So here we're going to go into this setting here. Once we get this box open up here, we're now to enable this and we can then configure it. So let's go ahead and put the radio button into enable. And once we've done this, we can apply this on OK. It does tell you some helpful information on the right hand pane there, which you can read and uh, it will help you understand what this is actually going to do. I'll show you what it does at the end of the video. So let's go ahead and uh, move on to the next section. But like I said, there is some other things in here which you can mess around with. So let's go back. Always, once you finish with that location, you can always close this off and go back to the next location. In this case, we're going to be going up to the computer configuration this time. And then we're going to go down to where it says Windows settings. So if we drop down the Windows settings here, you'll see there's a list of Windows settings here on the left hand side, which we can select. So you can either go to any of these, but we're going to go into security settings here. And from here, you're going to get a list of stuff that we can access like local policies and account policies. But we're going to choose local policies for this one. And then we're going to go to security options. Let's go in here. And there's a bunch of good stuff inside here, which we can configure. So what you can do here is you can look down here, you'll see accounts. And you'll also see some other areas like network security, network access, and a bunch of other things in here. So you can choose which one of these groups you want to go into. So we're going to go into the actual network security here. And you can see here, this one relates to preventing Windows from storing LAN manager hash, which is basically to do with passwords. But this is now enabled by default, but this never used to be enabled by default. And it can be a bit of a security risk. So I wanted to show you that there, but there is some other ones in here which we can look at and I'll show you those a little bit later on. So let's close this back up and go to another location where we can make changes. So let's go to user configuration, administrative templates, open this one up here. And from here, we're going to go down to where it says system. Inside here, we have some really good stuff that we can uh, prevent access to. For instance, prevent access to the command prompt and also the registry editor tools. So you can go in here and you can basically enable this feature and then we can then change the settings on here. So let's go ahead and put the radio button in enable. And uh, you can see here, disable a command prompt scripting process. And we're going to say yes here. And then we can apply this on OK. And that means no one's going to be able to do anything inside of the uh, command prompt PowerShell or Windows Terminal or any of that stuff. So let's go ahead and apply an OK. And uh, that close that off. And we also want to restrict access to the registry editor to stop people from gaining access to the registry editor. And we can go in here and we can mess around in here and say enable, say yes, apply and OK. And once we've done that, that will stop those two from gaining access to those locations. Now, there is some other ones on here which you can configure as well. 
I'm not going to go too heavy into some of this stuff, but if you want to see some more on this, then let me know in the comment section. But the first thing I want to do here is why I'm in here is go to all removable storage classes here, denying all access. This stops people from being able to plug in a USB flash drive, which means they could copy uh, data from uh, the computer to the USB flash drive, which is obviously a major security uh, risk. And also it stops people from infecting the computer because it just won't uh, populate once you plug it in. And this obviously can stop people from bringing, say, viruses in from the outside world and plugging it in on a USB flash drive and infecting the whole network. So we don't want to do that. So you could block access to that. Now, also, once we're inside here as well, we're going to go back and uh, close all these off and start off from uh, the beginning again. We're going to go to Computer Configuration this time, Administrative Templates, open this one up here. And down here, you've got some other options which we can go to. I'm going to go to Windows Components this time. And then we're going to come on down a little bit further. And what we're looking for here is we're looking for, uh, let's see, Windows Installer. And uh, we can go inside here. And uh, we can actually turn off a couple of features on here. So the first one in here is this uh, restrict the uh, user installs here or uh, prohibit uh, user installs. We can uh, do that one here and click on here. And basically, we can enable this if we want you to, and we can then stop them from doing that. So, for instance, user install behavior, hide user installs. We can set that to that there and apply this and OK it. Now, there's allow user installs, but we're going to hide this one here and it will stop that from happening. So let's apply an OK on this one here. And there is another one in, inside here which we can use, which is turn off Windows installer. And we can do that also. And you can see here, we're going to enable this feature and put it to always disable Windows installer. And that one's now done. And of course, there is some other ones in here which you can have a look at. But we're going to come out of here now and go back to the beginning again and start in another location. So let's go to the next one, which I think is quite useful to learn is the, I'm gonna to go to computer configuration here, administrative templates, and then come down to Windows components again. And we're gonna open up on the right hand side here. And if we look here, we're gonna look for, we can see here uh, OneDrive, there we go. So OneDrive, and we can prevent people from using OneDrive. This means they can't up, upload any sort of documents to OneDrive. And of course, this will be on the actual operating system itself. Now, you could uninstall OneDrive if you wanted to, uh, but you can also prevent people from using it as well by enabling this feature. And this will then stop them from using OneDrive here. And as you can see, there's a little list of stuff here. And we can also stop uh, Windows apps as well from being installed. And uh, the Windows Store, we can stop that from being used as well. And there's a few other things in there you can mess about with, uh, but we'll cover that in other videos. So let's go back to the beginning again, and we're going to go compute configuration this time, and we're going to start from there, and then we'll go to the Windows settings. Now, we went into Windows settings earlier, but we're going to go here again, and we're going to go down into where it says security settings, open this up, and you should see here uh, local policies. And we also have account policies, which is another useful place. So let's go to local policies this time and then security options. Inside here, you want to make sure on the account section that the guest account status is disabled. And that's important because we don't want someone logging into a guest account. So make sure that is forced to disable and they won't be able to use that particular account if they wanted to. OK, so that's that area covered. So while we're in the accounts part here, so let's go back a bit here and go to the accounts policies here and we can change some of the passwords while we're here. So in the same location, just above the local policies here in the security settings, we're going to need to click on the account policies inside the account policies. This is going to allow us to set up our passwords because obviously every computer needs to have a password on it, especially in some sort of company or something like that. Inside here, we've got the minimum password length. You can set this up to a designated size. So maybe you want to force uh, the user to create a longer password, right? So for instance, you can set this up to say 10 or 14 or something along those lines. And all we need to do here is just change the figure inside here to something that you want. So for instance, you don't want to make it too difficult, but 10 
is a pretty good number, or you could set it to 14. And that means that they have to uh, make passwords at least 10 characters long. And again, uh, this is another thing uh, that we've got here, uh, maximum password age. This is another common thing. 42 days is the default value. That means the password will last 42 days. And this is quite a big security risk. So you can make it seven days or 14 days. And uh, 14 days means they would have to change their password every 14 days to something different to stop it being uh, kept on the system for long periods of time where people can then infiltrate uh, the computer. So we don't want to do that. So once you've got that set, uh, that's those done now. And again, up the top here, uh, enforce password history. You want to make sure that's set to zero because you don't want any password history being stored on the computer as well. That's another important uh, one to make sure. And that's a good security measure right there. So that's that done. Let's come out of here now and we'll go back and we'll go to a, another location. OK, so let's take a look at the computer configuration this time. And we're going to go to administrative templates here and in Windows components. And then we're going to go down to Windows updates here because we want to take a look inside here. There's quite a few things inside here that might interest you. So go in here and uh, inside here, you've got a, a free directories inside here, which you can go into. I'll go through some of these so you can see them and, uh, and you'll be able to see what's in here. So manage updates offered for Windows up, uh, from Windows updates. So click inside here and you'll see a bunch of uh, features inside here. So select target feature, update version, and also manage preview builds. Uh, do not include drivers with Windows updates. And there's a bunch of other stuff in here which you can use. Uh, so select when quality updates are delivered to you. And uh, we can go into the next folder here as well. And you can see there's some really useful stuff inside here. I'm not going to make changes on this section uh, for this video, but we're just going to come out. There's one area I want to go into here. And this is to change the uh, way that the PC is restarting after it gets an update. I do not want updates happening during a period of time and enforcing a restart on that period of time because someone could be working and they could be forced to restart the PC or it could just restart automatically. So this is it here. So it's turn off automatic restart from updates uh, during active hours. We're going to enable this feature and you can set this to a start time and an end time. So we want to set it to 8 a.m. in the morning to end of 5 p.m., which normally is sort of a working hours. And we don't want it ever doing that because that means the person could be working on a, uh, an important document and all of a sudden it will just start to restart the system because it's updated in the background. So we don't want that happening. So that's a good one to set up here. And you can configure automatic updates and a bunch of other stuff inside here as well. But we're going to leave that for another video. So let's go off and uh, close these up and we'll do one more. And we want to block access to the Windows uh, store. We don't want people using the Windows store. So let's go ahead and go to Compute Configuration here, Windows Settings, and then we're going to go down to where it says uh, Security Settings. Click on the Security Settings uh, section, open this up. And then once we go inside here, we want to come all the way down uh, to where it says Software Restrictions Policies. And we need to right click on this and quickly right click on here. New Software Restriction Policy is what we need. So let's click on this and this will open up another window on the right hand side. And you can see here we do have additional rules, enforcement and a bunch of other things inside here, which is quite useful. So this is where we want to to be because we can make changes here. If you look at additional rules here inside here, you can see there's a couple of rules on here. We can right click on this and create a new uh, zone rule or new hash rule or new certificate rule or new path rule. You can also click on the right hand side here and select one of these. So we go new path rule here and create a new path rule. So let's go ahead and click on this. You now need to put in the path. I've got one here, which is for Windows Store. So we're gonna, you can browse to it as well. And we can also say security level disallowed. And we can now disallow that area and no one will be able to open up the Windows Store because we've disallowed it. And you can add a bunch of other stuff inside here and disallow and allow and, and whatever you want to set it up as. But it's quite a powerful uh, area of group policy here. Okay, so let's navigate back uh, to the beginning here and we'll basically block access to 
uh, the C drive here. And that's another thing that I want to do. So make sure we don't have access to the C drive so people can't go sniffing around inside there. It'll be hidden from view. So we can go to user configuration, administrative templates here, and inside here go Windows components. And what we need to do here is we're going to come down here until we see. Let's have a look here. And we're looking for File Explorer here. So click on here. And once we're in here, you can see there is a ton of good stuff inside here which you can uh, play around with. But we're going to have a good look here at hide these uh, specific type of drives in my computer. So let's go here. And we're going to enable this feature. And of course, restrict all drives. We don't want to do that. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to restrict a uh, C drive only, but they may have a drive on there, but you can select whatever you like here and they won't be able to access them. Now they can still use the computer, they just can't go there and have a look around at the drives because they'd be disappeared. And there's a bunch of other settings you can do so they can't search for it and stuff like that. Okay, so I think that'll be it for this one. Let's go ahead and restart the PC and uh, we'll get a restart going. And of course, there's loads of other good stuff you can be doing here, but these are just some of the more common ones that people like to uh, set up. So, but there is some other stuff in here which you can go ahead and start to disable uh, to stop people gaining access to these. So I'm gonna quickly restart the PC. Now you may be thinking, why don't I do that in command prompt and just update them there because we've disabled command prompt, so you won't have access to it. And uh, again, you can disable a group policy editor as well if you wanted to on the machine. Okay, the restart has now been done, so those policies should be in place. And again, when we go to CMD and open it up, the box opens up. But you can see here, it says this command prompt has been disabled by your administrator. And again, if you try reg edit or anything like that and type registry editor, you can see you can't access it because it's been set up by our administrator. Same thing goes for your C drive. It's not here. It's gone. And uh, there's a bunch of other stuff you can set up as well. But basically, that is now being blocked. If we go to other areas on here as well, which I'll quickly show you, uh, settings or control panel or the settings pane will be disabled. It will shut down automatically because we're not allowing them access to there. And that's important because obviously you don't want them making changes to the computer or having access to areas which where they can uh, do damage to the computer. Anyway, that is it. You can see they're all pretty much blocked. And again, installing programs, all that sort of stuff will not work. And you can go through and add more stuff and lock that system down. And if you're trying to open up, say, for instance, a Windows Terminal or something like that, these won't work either because we've blocked those. And again, you can go ahead and block access to all of the system tools for Windows. You can block access to all of that stuff so they won't be able to open any of that stuff up. Uh, the run box as well, you could block access to that and a bunch of other bits and pieces that you might need to block to stop people from gaining access to it and trying to run commands from there and doing other stuff on that computer that you don't want them to do. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it for this video. hope this video has been a bit helpful. Uh, it's a bit of a long one, but I hope you enjoyed it. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members. I really appreciate the support, and I shall catch you in the very next video, or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Thanks again for watching. Have a lovely day. Bye for now.